you know, the thing is, if we're going to have a victorious life, we have to be in the Word of God. And whenever I deal with people and counseling with people, whether they're having struggles at home or whether they have some kind of addiction, there's two things that is really important for people to understand. That is, first of all, they have to be in God's Word. If you think you're going to make it in this world without being constantly in His Word, you're going to fail. And the other thing is to have fellowship. And I don't know how many times I come across with people who says, you know what, I, I don't need to go to church. <coughs> I don't need to be around people. I can just worship God in my home and read my Bible. But I think that's one of the biggest lies that Satan will put in people's ways is that they don't need other people. You see, God created us needing other people. And in order to have a victorious life, we got to be around people and we got to be in God's Word. And the question is, who is going to influence who? You know, when I think about the people that I, I minister to, the ones that are successful in breaking addiction or coming out of a sinful lifestyle into a godly lifestyle, they have something in common. Imagine that. First of all, they have learned a secret, secret that you have to be in God's Word daily, and that you have to surround yourself with good people. Remember, Scripture teaches us that bad company does what? can't hear you. Corrupts good character. Corrupts good morals of your character. And so many times people think that, you know, when they get help, they can just go right back to their friends and do the same thing and expect different results. And you know, if you're not strong, a strong person, and you go back to that old lifestyle, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall right back into that lifestyle. Yet some people who break addictions think that they can go into the bar and expect to help their friends that are in the bar when they haven't broken the addiction of their own drinking habits. And pretty soon, they, they enter the bar thinking that they could. But of course, somebody else will hey, one drink's gonna, not going to hurt you? Come on. And pretty soon, they don't know when to stop. And now, in the state of Nebraska, they're talking about legalizing marijuana. Well, you know, Colorado's making all this money, right? Why not? You know, we might as well get the taxes, the tax benefit from selling marijuana. So let's do it. I mean, we know that prohibition didn't work right in America. That, that caused uh, worse problems, so we now legalize alcohol and now we can tax alcohol. But you know, all the taxation and all the money that we get is not paying for the homes that are being destroyed by alcohol. And it actually has destroyed our society today. Because there's so many, I, I don't know, you know, when I, when I think about all the people that have has been affected by alcohol and drugs. It's, the numbers are staggering. I just read in a paper today about a uh, Nebraska State Patrol officer who is retiring and he talks about how many people have been destroyed by methamphetamine. That it is the worst, one of the worst drugs that people are addicted to. And I say, yeah, because a lot of people that I've dealt with, a lot of them have been involved in meth. And of course, when they have a meth addiction, they have to pay for that drug. And so they're also dealing the drug. And many of them end up in jail. And in talking to some of these, I say, well, at least if you go to jail, you don't, you don't have access.
access to that, right? No, they, it's available even in jail. That's how bad it is. You see, the thing is, these people have minds that God created them to have, to be creative, but they use it for the wrong purpose. Man, if they can just use those gifts <coughs> that God has created them with for good, can you imagine how productive they can be in society instead? They use that creativity -ness to be able to fashion weapons in prison or to get their way. And they can even do some controlling of people outside of the jail to get their purpose done. So again, I say that two things got to happen in life is first of all, you have to be in God's Word, constantly. And I say, memorize the Word of God. Now, how many give the excuse, well, I can't memorize, I'm too old. Huh? <laughs> you know, that's just an excuse that you cannot memorize. Because the devil does not want you to know God's Word. You know, I was fortunate enough to go to a Christian school and to go to church and Sunday school and all this and, and memorize. I went to camps and I memorized. In fact, when I was going to camp, I remember that I loved it. I love competition. And so you have all these, you know, when you go to camp, you get all these points. The more you memorize, the more points you get. And I didn't know why I was doing all this except I got a lot of points. But today I am happy that I was competitive in memorizing God's Word. Because I have put it here, and it has come to me when I need it the most. Thy Word have I hid in my heart, that I, that I might not sin against thee. And when I think about God's Word, and what God desires out of me and how I live my life. I think about the psalmist that said, blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Okay, here he's talking the very first verse about who you hang around with. <clears throat> if you hang around with the wicked people and do what the wicked people do, guess what you're going to be? You're going to be a wicked person does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates when? Yeah. What does that mean? All the time. All the time. <laughs> he will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither, and in whatever he does, he prospers. Now, I'm not trying to preach a prosperity gospel here, but there's something that happens to us when we're in God's Word, and when we meditate on it all the time. You know, the reason why people do not prosper is because they don't understand who God is and what He intends for each and every one of us. God wants to bless us beyond what we can imagine. And a lot of times it is us that get in the way of God's blessing. <laughs> the wicked are not so, but they are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor are sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. What I want to do is I want to play some, some nice instrumental music while I read the next chapter, I mean the, the book, the chapter of Psalm 119. It's a long passage, so I thought, well, I want you to close your eyes and just meditate on what the Word of God says. The Psalms is written in poetry form. But you know, if you understand Hebrew poetry, there is a, a sense of repetition that goes on. 
For I wait for your ordinances, so I will keep your law continually, forever and ever. And I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be ashamed. I shall delight in your commandments, which I love, and I shall lift up my hands to your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember the word to your servant, in which you have made me hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, that your word has revived me, there it utterly deride me, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I have remembered your ordinances from of old, O Lord, to comfort myself. Burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes are my song in the house of my pilgrimage. O Lord, I remember your name in the night and keep your law. This has become mine, that I observe your precepts. The Lord is my portion. I have promised to keep your words. I sought your favor with all of my heart. Be gracious to me according to your word. I consider my ways and, and turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to keep your commands. The cords of the wicked have encircled me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I shall rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous ordinances. And I am a companion of all of those who fear you and of those who keep your precepts. The earth is full of your loving kindness, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. You have dealt well with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good discernment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good, and you good. Teach me your statutes. The arrogant have forged a lie against me. With all my heart, I will observe your precepts. Their heart is covered with fat. But I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and pieces of silver. Your hands made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. May those who fear you see me and be glad, because I wait. For your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. Oh, may your loving kindness comfort me according to your word to your servant. May your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. May the arrogant be ashamed, for they subvert me with the lie, but I shall meditate on your precepts. May those who fear you turn to me, even those who know your testimonies, may my heart be blameless in your statutes, so that I may not be ashamed. My soul languishes for your salvation, I wait for your word. My eyes fail with longing for your word while I say, when will you comfort me? Though I have become like a wineskin in the smoke, I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your servant? When we execute judgment on those who persecute me, the arrogant have dug pits for me, men who are not in accord with your law. All your commandments are faithful. They have persecuted me with a lie. Help me. They almost destroyed me on the earth, but as for me, I did not forsake your precepts. Revive me according to your loving kindness so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness continues through all generations. You establish the earth that it stands. They stand this day according to your ordinances, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them 
you have revived me. I 